So Harry, tell me how a, a lad from Kitchener, Ontario comes to be playing football in the Highlands of Scotland. Um, well, it's a long story. We've um, got time. Back in Kitchener, you know, I played for my local, my local town team. It wasn't a professional or, or anything. And my coach was really, really good back, back home. And um, he got me introduced to, uh, to an agency. And um, luckily he brought me up into um, England, you know. I had the chance of going to the Toronto FC MLS side, um, but I really wanted to kind of get overseas and give it a shot. And I went over to three big teams and trialed there and I ended up signing with, with Fulham for two years. Mm. So that was a really kind of proud moment for me. Um, and then and I wanted to kind of keep going and I wanted to kind of progress into the first team environment and Fulham's a big, big team. So I didn't think that would have been uh, a great option, um, but I ended up signing over to, to Hearts mm. and was there for two years. Um, and then went on loan, had some loan spells there and done well. And, and I think that caught the eye of Ross County and, and I came up here and signed up here. Yeah. Talk to me about that move to Fulham. It's, it's a big move. It's a long, long way. Totally different environment. How did that affect you? How did it shape you? What did it feel like going through that at such a young age? Yeah, so I was only 15 when I moved over and it wasn't my family was to come with me. It was mm. kind of, it was just me. And, you know, growing up, I was quite independent. Um, so I think that really shaped me to be, you know, really independent, you know, growing up and on my own over in, in London, I stayed with host families um, and uh, I was moving about, uh, you know, house family to house family. Um, but I think that shaped me kind of, it really helped me focus, you know, just on the football aspect of things and um, to kind of handle, handle myself and to cook especially, yeah. that was a big thing. Um, but yeah, I think uh, if I went back, I, I wouldn't change it. I think I'd go over mm. myself again. Absolutely. I mean, it's a massive life experience. And I guess, although you were an independent kid, you have to do a lot of growing up at 15 in that environment when you're transplanted into it from so far away, no family, you don't know anybody. And I guess there have been some, some big characters, some highly rated young players that you were, you were playing with. You maybe weren't a big fish in a small pond anymore. There was a lot of, a lot of sharks you were swimming around with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was, there was a lot of talent uh, when I was there. Uh, quite a few boys. Um, I know when I was there, the Patrick Roberts was mm -hmm. there. Um, that Ryan Sessiong boy who's yeah. doing extremely well, he was there as well. Some really talented uh, talented footballers there and it was great to be a part of it and, and learned and I kind of learned on my kind of ground roots, you know, up through there and it was great. The, the staff and everything was, was top notch. Yeah. Did that, in a sense, show you what it took to be a professional at the top level? Did you look at guys in the first team there and go, okay, that's the bar. This is what I need to do with my training, my diet, my sleep, all the things that require no talent to to make it in this game the way I want to? Yeah, um, like growing up, I, I was always really healthy. I was always really kind of focused. I was a big perfectionist, you know, and, and going into that environment, um, watching, like I was walking, watching the first team train, seeing Scott Parker and that, you mm. know, um, when he was there at the time, it was a, it was a big eye opener and you kind of wanted to strive to be, to be like, like that. And um, yeah, it was great, you know, playing and I was kind of the Canadian, you know, they're not yeah. really, they're um, not really big on football, you know, back home, but um, it was it was really a really big eye opener, and it was uh, great to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. As a perfectionist, how do you react to mistakes or hardship when things don't go well? Clearly, you set yourself very high standards. How does your your brain process disappointment? Uh, yeah, that was one of the big things, you know, growing up for me. It was really difficult when things weren't going my way, and I've had to work a lot, you know, over the years of how to rectify it, you know, and I was really hard on myself, I think for, for my whole career really, and still today, I still have to kind of focus on, you know, when I make the mistake, you know, just maybe the next pass, keep it simple and, and just make the, that's the big thing I'm working on with the gaffers here, just mm. decision making, you know, when to make the right pass, when to dribble, you know, um, especially in, in the final third, that's the big thing I'm working on. And I just got to keep going and focusing and making sure I'm doing it in training and games. Does that come with experience, that, that decision-making? Because I guess the more football you play, the more time you're in those situations, the better you become at recognising what the correct option is. Yeah, I, experience for sure. Um, also, I think it's also just your skill, you know, you know when you're in those positions, you know what to do. And I think I, I'm always thinking about five different things to do. And it's just picking the, the right one in that situation for yeah, me, I think. That clarity of thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about how you react to mistakes now. You were saying that in the past it used to get you very down. Does it still plague you a little bit if 
you play the wrong pass or you, you take a shot and it, it doesn't go to plan, doesn't go on target? Do you still think about it for hours after the game? Do you watch your footage and go, ah, I took the wrong option there? Yeah, you know, it's always going to be like that. If you have a bad game, you're going to have a bad game and you're going to think about it for the next few days. Um, but at the moment, you know, when you make a bad shot or, or whatever during the game, there's plenty more minutes during the game. You just got to leave it and, and continue, you know, get the next one in. The next one, make sure it's a good so I'm shot. jumping about all over the here, all over the place here, chronology-wise and timing-wise. But your spell at Hearts, what effect did that have on you? You obviously went to Stenhouse Muir, played a lot of really good football down there. You were key in a, in a promotion from League Two to League One in one of your seasons there. What was that like as a as an experience and getting a taste of men's football? Really physically abrasive, competitive stuff where guys are working and then playing and don't have the luxury of being full-time players in a lot of cases. Um, yeah, so initially when I signed to Hearts, it was Robin Nielsen who, who took me in and um, I was really enjoying the football at the time. He was um, really good with me and I was in the first team, you know, getting the squads and stuff. Um, and it was a time where Hearts went through quite a few managers at the mm. time. Um, and I, the opportunity came to go on loan and I really jumped on it because I wanted to get playing, you know, first team football to show, um, you know, the coaches and uh, what, what I can do, you know, in that environment. And um, I went to, to Senhouse, they, they took me um, and I really enjoyed the football. I was playing every week mm. and um, I know the level wasn't, you know, at the top premiership level, but it was still good to get the 90 minutes in and show people, you know, what I can do and getting goals and, and helping them out to, to get, get them promoted. It was, mm. it was a good uh, experience. Yeah. What did that do for you in terms of your football ability? Just being able to play every single week, know that you're going to be a key part of a team in a you know a pretty tough environment. Yeah, you can always do you know in training you always can do things in training, but if you can't do it during the game, then it's not really beneficial. Um, and it was a great, um, you know, I said it again, it was a great experience. You know, playing with um, there's a lot of experienced boys in there that have been in the league for years, and they gave me pointers and stuff, and mm -hmm. I just took everything, took everything in and. And um, at the time, Brown Ferguson was a manager yeah. there, and he was really good with me working, not just like tactically and you know, but mentally as well, kind of keeping me confident and stuff. And it was, it was really beneficial for me. Yeah. Left field question could be total nonsense. So, I did some research on social media that would suggest you're quite handy on the piano. Is that true? This, I can't believe you found that. Um, <laughs> that was uh, we years do ago. RCFC TV. <laughs> that was years ago going through. Uh, you know, my school schooling, that was just a thing I picked up on and uh, my parents were, they weren't too like hard on me with it, but it was just mm. a hobby, you know, to do. And um, I'm really rusty right now. I haven't done it in years, but uh, I know one song, that's it. Yeah. What would that be? <laughs> um, I can't even think of the Don't name. Any Ross just remember songs. it. No, no Ross Gunny songs. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, little star on the <laughs> no. keyboard. Well, you said you've got a new place in Inverness now. You're going to be installing a, a piano or a keyboard to no, not, not unwind from the football? No, not for me, no. <laughs> well, let's talk a bit about your journey with County then. What do you want to add to your game? What areas have you targeted with the coaches for improvement as the season reaches the business end? Yeah, so I've really, really enjoyed my time at the club. It's been, it's been great. Um, personally, for me, I think working with the gaffers and, and through the years, I've come a long way. I felt I think I've come a long way, but I think there's a lot more to go. Um, definitely, like you said, that final third, when um, I'm in those positions, to get the assists and get the goals because that really like you can have an amazing game you know and if if nobody's really watching the game and you they see the results and they don't see the goals or they don't see the assists it's kind of lost mm -hmm. in a way so that's what i'm really kind of focusing on is to get those those goals and to get my name out there you know to get those assists and to help the team out as well and get some more points on the board for sure yeah and i'm sure the, the deferred 2020 now 2021 Tokyo Olympic Games are a big target for you as well. Representing Canada would be an awesome experience if, if you were to, to grasp that opportunity. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was um, kind of frustrating, you know, with the whole situation and the COVID and the cancellation of it. Um, but that's the goal, you know, playing um, for my national team, you know, whether that's the 21s or the men's, the men's team, hopefully either, either one would be, would be a great accomplishment for me. Yeah. Well, Harry, from Kitchener, Ontario to Dingwall, Scotland, it's been quite a journey. Thank you very much for Cheers. taking the time to talk to us and all the best for awesome. the future. Thank you. Cheers.